chapter for the Mercedes team is coming very soon. And we have some more updates on what these upgrades are going to look like and what to expect. Actually, more information from the drivers from both Hamilton and Russell and how this is going to be a completely new chapter for Mercedes and the expectation of winning on merit. When the race ended in Baku, really not too long ago, Total Wolf talked about two things needing to change in Formula One. He said either our team has to change and get a win on race merit, or the sport has to change. It's really a regulation thing happening right now. He says he prefers it to be the race merit win. And when speaking to the media and talking really to the different news outlets around the paddock, he talks about saying he believes they will win on race merit and the new upgrades coming will definitely help with that. And he's not talking about the end of the year where most expectations are like, oh, the Red Bull's going to fall off and then the Mercedes is going to come back. No, he's talking about they still plan on making a comeback into this fight. I think this weekend there was great prep. We weren't, we didn't have the pace that we wanted. We weren't as close to, to, the, to the front of the field like we were in, in uh, Melbourne. But um, I think that's lots of positives to take from this weekend. Now, while the constructors kind of looks locked up due to Red Bull having both cars finishing 1-2 almost every race with the exception of the insane mayhem we had in Australia, the Drivers' Championship is not locked up, and that is a fight towards the end. There have been many other instances where it was a first-half domination and a second-half comeback. The biggest one I'll use is Brown. While Vettel didn't end up actually winning that 9 season, it was a very close one and a lot closer than what people expected. Now, this could happen again, and I do expect it to happen again, especially with the stuff that's really brewing with the Mercedes squad. Even Lewis talks about this being a fresh new start. He's counting down the days, really the seconds and minutes that it's going to take for this upgrade to come. He says it might not change a lot. Obviously, his expectation is going to be a little bit lower considering what's happening with the Mercedes team, but he does say it's something he's anticipating and a new chapter, as I've used multiple times before. These upgrades, now that we know what they're going to be, a front suspension, and there was a part actually added to the front suspension in Baku. As I talked about, all the upgrades and everything I talked about before in my last video was accurate. Talking about that cooling is going to be improvised and really how they're going to do the cooling for this car, and a couple of little innovations. They added something to what I called the rear brake duct area, and, and a little front suspension wishbone. But the actual whole front suspension is gonna be changed because that the front suspension they currently have will now work with a different aero concept coming. Now, they're obviously going to keep that rear suspension because that in itself would be changing the chassis and they do not have the money to be doing that. Neither does Aston Martin or any team really on the grid unless they just wanna throw this year into the tanker. But that is not what the expectation is. They are bringing a new front suspension to correlate even better with their rear suspension, but changing the whole body of the car, and we can expect it to look literally like a complete change from the AMR A to the AMR B. If anybody remembers from last year, the big upgrade they brought to Spain, which was really called the Green Bull. Well, this will be a B-spec Mercedes, even without the actual chassis being changed, which cannot be changed there still will be a B-spec version for this car. The rear wing was also introduced in Baku to actually help with the newer concept coming. The really race pace that we got in Baku wasn't an accurate statement to where that Mercedes car's pace actually lies. I would probably say, considering that Leclerc and Alonso were about five tenths behind while reserving tires the whole entire race, and those Red Bulls were pushing pace, the Ferrari and the Aston Martin on practically the last laps of the Baku GP, while there wasn't much entertainment, if you really look at it, it was a GP where you can extract a lot of information and expect the season to really close up and the grid to close up and we can actually have a very exciting 2023 season. I think people's patience is running really thin and you can't just expect miracles to happen in the very beginning of the season. We still have yet to have any really big upgrade packages. While McLaren brought a big package, it wasn't a game-changing package. It did make them faster in the corners. We'll have to see. I think Imla will be a great race to see where that McLaren actually stands. But it wasn't pretty, it wasn't bad in the qualifying. It still had a lot of work to do on its race pace. Now, the Mercedes car improved upon straight line speed, already talked about, but it also improved upon a really big thing 
that's not being talked about is its actual graining of tires. It actually competed with the Aston Martin and was getting closer to that Red Bull. And Aston Martin and Red Bull are almost neck and neck. It's a very close battle between tire graining and how much they lose on the tires. So already bringing a little bit of parts and just trying to improve upon what the car's weakness is, Baku was never gonna be a great track for them. I guess I had a little bit of a higher expectation. I didn't think that they were gonna finish really fourth, but I also didn't expect the Baku race to be as slow as it was. Hamilton was faster than Sainz, and Hamilton's pace was just as fast as Leclerc and Alonso if he was actually able to get through. He was stuck behind the other cars. It wasn't a very fair assessment, and I guess I can use this, but every other team had the same thing. They were nowhere near the perfect setup window that they should have been. Their car got better, they improved upon the little upgrades coming, but what is coming in Miami is not much. It's not Miami that we should expect, it's Imla where these big upgrades will just be blasted onto the car. And like I talked about, and I mentioned this in a video before too, expect that W14 to get a drastic undercut. And I mean a completely different overhaul on the way that, that side pod performs. It's going to have an upper floor that goes flowing straight towards its rear suspension. It's not going to look like an AMR. It's not going to look like a Red Bull. It will be their own original concept with features of both cars. Everybody's trying to get like an accurate, oh, how it's gonna look like this, how it's gonna look like this. They have to be changing it somewhat because they're going for a concept that's trying to be the best concept. As even James Allison talks about, this car is not a success till it's number um, one. And so on and so on. And it's, and it's, and it's not sort of one thing, oh, we'll do that and it's all gonna be good. You gotta work on all of it, every single bit of it. So you can't be number one if you're copying the AMR, who is in second place right now and still needing upgrades to come back. You can't be number one copying Red Bull because they have the better information they're gonna do it the Mercedes way like they've been doing it for years upon years. And that will require drastic changes as we talked about. Really changing the whole flow of the car from its front suspension to the middle of the body. It will have the same downwash as the Red Bull. I can expect that to happen. I can expect even its whole really underfloor to start taking a I guess similar resemblance to the Red Bull. But changes are needed to its diffuser, and we know the changes are coming to the diffuser. And really, that real back aero package. That was actually something that was rumored to come in Baku, but is now going to be part of that huge package still coming in Imola. And will really be how they close the gap. Imola is a track that I expect them to perform very well on. It's a track that isn't very much rear-oriented or front-oriented. It's got a little bit of both. It's a very balanced, well-done track it's very important on how fast you can get on the throttle and how accurate you are at hitting the apexes. Now, that Mercedes car is pretty slick and I would expect them to be very fast in sector two and in sector one. I think the same expectations should be had in Miami. They will be better there. They will probably beat the Ferrari. I expect Ferrari to fall back to fourth again, even with its upgrades coming in Mercedes taking the cake for either second or third. They might fight for a podium. It'll be close between Hamilton and Alonso. Maybe George, goes into the mix and maybe hit Lance has a banger weekend but mainly between those two guys what are your guys expectations do you guys believe these upgrades are going to change the game for Mercedes let me know your thoughts down below please leave a like subscribe it mean the world and peace